Good day to all of you. Good afternoon for us at the moment. Welcome to another episode of the Coffee with Coaches podcast. I'm your host, Kevin. And today I have with me Orville Ray Wilson. Um, Orville Ray is a 40-year veteran of the coaching business um, who has spoken in more than 1,000 cities in 47 countries, not an exaggeration, on every continent except Antarctica. Come on, you're slacking. (laughs) He now coaches elite speakers from around the world and is a co-author of the legendary Guerrilla Marketing series with more than 25 million books in print. Orville Ray, underachiever. Welcome to the podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, Kevin. It's a pleasure. Well, I I haven't actually been coaching for 40 years. The first 30 years I spent as a journeyman speaker on the international circuit doing seminars and workshops and training and and yeah mostly around sales and marketing but uh yeah along with jay levinson and um a handful of other people produced this the the most successful series of marketing books in publishing history yeah it's incredible it's it's very rarely do have i heard of someone's book before i talk to them usually i were talking about a book that's about to come out or one that just very recently come out these i was like guerrilla marketing that sounds really familiar a yeah. quick Google, I was like, oh, yeah, I remember these. There I love go. these. Um, so let's talk about that a little bit, actually. That uh, I don't know if you would call it a transition, but when you moved from, or maybe you didn't move away from into something else, but how you became more of a coach um, on top of being an accomplished public speaker. Um, I imagine there's a lot of overlap there, but tell us a little bit about your journey and your decisions around that time, around your around you moving more into coaching. Well, in, in the fall of 2018, I got a, a phone call from a neighbor of mine up the road. And uh, he, he said, Orville Ray, I've got the uh, steel for the roof up onto the rafters of the addition, but the inspector is coming uh, tomorrow. And I was wondering if you could give me a hand uh, putting the screws in so I can get the inspection certified. Hmm. I was like, yeah, sure. So I you know, pulled on a pair of trainers and some jeans and my tool belt and drove up the mountain and spent a beautiful Blue sky, sunshiny day uh, up on the roof, putting in about 3,000 screws. And uh, about just about the time that sun was about to disappear behind the, the mountains, uh, I made a really dumb mistake and uh, through a combination of gravity and uh, stupidity, managed to lose my footing, slid off of this roof, uh, this steel panel roof. It was like a, a playground slide. Hmm. Uh, went off the edge, fell two and a half stories, landed on top of a pile of rocks that had just been delivered by the landscapers. Broke my back, broke my leg, broke my arm real bad. And the next thing I knew, I was, you know, in a hospital brace and a cage brace from, uh, from my neck to my hips and my arm in traction. And, and I, I, I didn't know if I'd ever walk again, let alone be able to travel and speak and, uh, and whatever. Um, so, we live in a pretty remote area. We're up in the mountains here, west of Boulder. And my friends in the National Speakers Association, they came out of the woodwork. They said, hey, we'll go do the gig for you. Give you the money. We'll make phone calls. We'll make stamps. What can we do? It's like, well, uh, that's that's all very well and good. But I could really use it as some company. Yeah. And so they did. They made the trek up and would sit around. And as people are inclined to do, we would talk shop. And after a few months, they started asking, how much would you charge to continue coaching me? It's like, what? I thought, we were, oh. I thought we were just having a conversation. We were, we were like, yeah, but I've like doubled my business in the last three months, and that's a good thing, and I'd like to keep that going. <laughs> so I had to learn all about coaching and got involved with the uh, International Coach Federation chapter here in Colorado. I did some programming for them and then uh, went back to school for a year, got my certificate in executive coaching. And that together with my CSP, which is the highest certification you can earn it in, in, as a public speaker. Mm-hmm. Uh, I started working with, well, continuing to work with those clients and, and others. And over the last uh, more than a decade, we've built up a nice, tidy little practice. I can't tell you how, how much the dad joke in me loves the fact that you literally fell into coaching. <laughs> I, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's killing me. I'm like, I'm bubbling up with joy for how, how much of a great dad joke that is. I love it. I, I mean, I, of course, I don't love that you fell off a roof, but just the journey from that and then pivoting into coaching and how you literally fell into coaching. I am well, I'm happy to say to... that physically I'm fully recovered now. So it's good. It's been a, good, it's good, been good. a great journey. Good. So. That makes me feel a lot better about using that joke too much. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, I've told that story more times than I can count, and you're the first person who's picked that up. Yes. <laughs> it's pretty sharp, Kevin. Uh. Well, let's talk. Let's get, let's get into some specifics. Um, usually around this point in the conversation, I ask about what you, what you would view as unique about your coaching approach, but you do seem to have a very specific niche in that you um, got all this feedback from fellow speakers who were just, they were just basically telling you, you are improving my business with your advice. You should mm -hmm. do this as part of your profession. So um, what is your approach? Do you coach pretty exclusively public speakers and keynote speakers? Do you have an expanded repertoire of people that you coach? Uh, what's, your, what's your focus and how do you approach it? I would say more the latter than the former. Most of the mm -hmm. clients I work with today are professionals in some other field, attorney, uh, uh, public relations uh, agency, uh, uh, another executive coach, uh, uh, but these are people who want to use the platform uh, to build thought leadership that then turns into revenue for their primary practice, the, the side of the bread that has the, the butter on it. Uh, for example, I was working with an attorney uh, in Minneapolis that actually I met through an NSA chapter and he wanted to grow his legal practice and so the question was well what kind of clients do you you know do you enjoy working with what do you want more of oh well gee you know i do these uh, uh these business divorce you know partnerships where you know one one guy wants to build an empire and the other guy wants to retire to a boat in florida and, mm -hmm. you know or, or or one of them's got his hand in the till or or you know is is you know where he's sick and not holding up his end and unraveling these cases are they're interesting and they can be very lucrative hmm. uh okay so how do we become a thought leader in that space he wrote a book called the bulldog guide to business divorce Ooh, good title which looks well uh, which looks like this and um publish it on uh amazon now and um over the arc of writing the book he increased his law practice by north of a million dollars because just the process yeah. forced him to work through his thinking and, and to articulate the things that were otherwise unconsciously competent. Mm. And uh, so he started talking about the book and that led to, oh, well, I know a guy who, you know, I need to refer you to my friend who, and one thing in a, a, after another. So even before the book came into print, he had, um, succeeded in his original objectives uh, he went on to, to develop a half day seminar for other lawyers uh, got that certified for continuing legal education credit and now he's doing virtual seminars for boards of uh, uh, for what's the word? Uh, the, <laughs> uh, the for the legal profession around the country so uh, there's that's one you know a simple example just off the, but I have a whole shelf of uh, stories here just exactly like that one <laughs> I, I love time. that yeah i love yeah, that them all lined up there. Talk about so it's you know what do you what do you want to do what do you want more of what do you want to become seen as an expert in hmm. let's gather together what you think you know about that topic and see where the gaps are do the research we need to to fill that in put that together in a proven model because you know my goal is to write a book that sells you rather than you write a book and then you have to go sell it that's good <laughs> and and so that's unique. I will never pass the PCC or MCC <laughs> exams because uh, because a lot of the stuff I do is is technical. Well, like what kind of microphone should I buy? Or you know, tell me what's wrong with my website. Well, you'll see your, your phone number. Put your phone number in the upper left hand corner there. Mm -hmm. But only if you want people to call you. And they're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> <Why not? laughs> I'm talking to my wife. Fix that, you know, and. Uh, but it's, it's, it's so, you know, everything from advanced acting and storytelling skills. I just taught a master class in St. Louis for a group there on, you know, how do you communicate, you know, your, your, your story? Uh, how do you position yourself? How do you answer the question on the, you know, on the airplane? So what sort of work do you do? <laughs> uh, there was a woman, a recent case woman in Houston late 40s, black, really smart engineer. She led the team that invented 5G. 
you hear about 5G rolling out? Yeah. I don't know. Right. Five, six years ago, she was inventing that. And she was referred to me by a, a friend of a friend. And she said, how do I tell my story? I'm running up against not only the glass ceiling because of my gender, but because of my race and everything else. And I haven't gotten a promotion or a raise in seven years. And I am fed up with being fed up. Uh-huh. And how do I become an advocate for my own career uh, within AT&T? And so over the arc of three or four sessions, uh, we worked on kind of her backstory and her history and how to articulate that. Uh, she Almost on a whim, she took an interview with IBM just to kind of practice these skills mm. uh, before her performance review came up at AT&T. Smart. And they made her an offer, <laughs> a promotion, <laughs> a raise. And uh, she said, well, gosh, I wasn't really expecting this, but let me see what happens when my review comes up. So her review came up at AT&T. They offered her a raise and a promotion, and she was due to retire in two months anyway. Huh. So she took the raise. That bumped up the value of her retirement. And then she crossed the street and she went to work for IBM. <laughs> That's the way you do it. <laughs> and now you, so it's really, you know, that's one of the things that really excites me about coaching yeah. is that sometimes I, you can really change somebody's life just, you know, uh, for the better in, in, in so many different ways. I love the way you so, phrased it and used that word advocate, advocate for yourself. And, and hmm. That's just, that's so, it's, it's such an overlooked skill. And people don't even, they, they think of it as something like they have to just, you know, do better about speaking up for themselves. There's more to it than that. There's actually a skill set to it that you can, right. you can learn, that you teach, actually, that can allow you to better advocate for yourself. And yeah, the, the, that's a great, uh, that story is a great example, but is far from uncommon. That kind of story, I'm sure you have dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of them, because that's exactly right. the kind of major change that you can make in your life, like being able to speak better about yourself, for yourself, and also the little technical details, like you were saying, like the tiny little stuff that maybe you don't think of. There's hundreds of them. You know, where's your phone mm-hmm. number on your website? Who, how many people think about that? Not everybody, they're like, oh, I never thought about that. I guess I should have. Right. <laughs> it's a real full spectrum approach. I, I like it. You're very, you're very specific, but you also cover a broad spectrum of, of results. I think that might be the best way to put it. Well, Lying there in that hospital bed, I I was eyeing the bottle of Oxycontin, fully intending to swallow all of them because life as I knew it was over. Mm. And uh, you know, after being a, 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 really a, a you know an international celebrity in my tiny little you know field, yeah. um, it was a it was a big shock. And it turns out that a lifetime of experience is actually really valuable. <laughs> who'd have thought who uh, <laughs> and, and so coaching for me has been a vehicle for sharing that hmm. with via people who can uh, use those skills and make their life better and build their business and build their income i get the impression that i could do this with you all day <laughs> not just because you have so many stories but also it's just your well yeah and i don't have that many clients to. actually so <laughs> <laughs> but let's I'm let's close busy. with where can people find you? Or I should, I should more accurately say, where do you like to be found? Um, do you have a preferred social media? Do you like people to reach out via the website? Third bar stool from the left. <laughs> 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 Little um, club there. No, no. Uh, if you go to www.gorillagroup.com, G-U-E-R-R-I-L-L-A, gorilla, as in guerrilla warfare mm-hmm. or guerrilla marketing, mm-hmm. gorillagroup.com. And you can read all about me and the work I do there. Uh, there's examples and references and testimonials and uh, all kinds of you know, everything you do want to know. Or your listeners can send me an email to Orville Ray at gmail.com, O R V E L R A Y at gmail. And I'll be happy to spend an hour with them on Zoom just for the asking. Oh, that, that's, that's, a, that's a powerful offer. Thank you for that. I'm um, serious. Yeah. And yeah, it's. Like I said, I could do this all day, but I feel like I should close this out. So thank you so much, Orville Wright, for being here and for sharing with us today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. And thank you all for listening. Um, We'll talk to you soon.